down and studying the Bible with them. You don't want to be the reason why they don't obey the gospel because of their loyalty to you. He was baptized, not that night. He was baptized later that week. A great thing. He told me later on that there were several occasions when we would preach on a, a subject of conviction like baptism that he had to do is all he could do to hold himself back. Um, a neat thing about him was with that musical background, he's wanting to channel that talent. It's a considerable talent. And so up to this point, he has written 30 hymns. And the first one was on baptism. So it was, it was really neat. He's a faithful Christian today, a great father, uh, and a pretty mean basketball player, too. He, he was the only reason we won any games in our league the last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, um, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I have had the opportunity on several occasions to uh, go to Tanzania. And uh, I participated in an event they hold every year called Safari for Souls. Um, it really is a great way to to, to uh, enhance our boldness uh, because in a third world country like that, there are a lot of opportunities in a short period of time to have a lot of Bible studies. Uh, and I'll never forget a study I did the last time I did Safari for the Souls, which a few years ago, with a lady named Glory. Glory had three children. We'd been studying on several occasions and some others had. It was very obvious that she was close to the, a, a decision. And, and what's remarkable, you see it in Matthew's gospel, people wanted the kingdom. They wanted what Christ was coming to, to, to bring. But as soon as he presses them, you know, to follow him, they begin to make excuses. That's a, it's a common human tendency. And we were getting to that point in the study where it was a moment of decision and um, she began to just tear up a little bit. And of course, I was having to work with a, uh, a translator. I don't speak fluent Swahili. And so I was asking her what was wrong. And she said, I know that what I need to do is to obey the gospel. She was on her kids were on financial support with a nut, with a religious group a denomination uh, in the country. And they paid her kids school fees and gave them a stipend. And she said, I suppose I had rather starve and go to heaven than to accept this stipend and lose my soul. And it was an awesome thing to see her obey the gospel. And the last report I have is that she's still a faithful member of the Arusha congregation. And still alive. Still alive. God and still care. eating. And her yeah, kids yeah. Uh, are still receiving an education. Not from in the way that she was, but yeah. Right. God is good. Huh? That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's, those are two great stories. And these are stories that if you don't, if you're listening or watching, if you don't share the gospel, you won't have a story. You know, and the stories only encourage you, right? I mean, every time this happens, who gets more out of it, you think? Oh, man. <laughs> Look, I, you know, I, I had said this recently. If you ever get somebody involved in evangelism and they are there at that moment when somebody obeys the gospel, you never have to tell them again. They're they're hooked because there's nothing like seeing that you're, you're a part of the process. Right. As, as as limited as we are. Second Corinthians chapter four. God works through us in order to accomplish his purposes the way he had it planned from the beginning. Well, and we, and, and we can you know, lots of people can save lives. They don't have to be a Christian to save a life, but That's no right. one saves souls. Only Jesus. So being, and the soul is eternal, right? You can you can bring back some, you know, you're you're giving them CPR and they come back to life. All you saved was a physical life. If you save the soul, if the soul gets saved, it's eternal. So that's, that's right. where you feel it, right there, huh? Amen. And going into call to action now. Yeah. So we got some stories, we got some strategies, which are really practical. We can. I don't think anybody who listens can't do something in here because it's there's some good stuff. What is a call to action now? You're going to talk to people right now, Neil, and you're going to send them off. So what are you going to say? All right. Keep in mind that you do not have to sit down with somebody and study with them in order to be a part of the process. In fact, I, I think it's the case that not all of us are are equipped to do that. If we can see in Romans chapter 12, verse four through eight, some application there, there are those who have the ability to teach. And then there are others who have uh, other uh, roles that they can play. And the examples he gives are things like encouragement and, and showing mercy and giving. Um, so you, you have these different ways in which you can engage in the process. But when I think about um, evangelism, there are, are so many different ways in which uh, people can utilize their gifts. 
Um, you can be warm and friendly when somebody has invited somebody to come to church and you can um, or you can engage them in some social way that is a part of the process of getting them to feel more comfortable with God's people. You can babysit somebody who is uh, conducting a study. You can, if you're an elderly, decrepit um, uh, person who can't even uh, walk, you can be informed that a study is going on and you can petition God for those who are involved in that. And when somebody obeys the gospel, you can find yourself a part of those who are doing the most neglected part of evangelism. And that's the, the third leg of the Great Commission. Teach those who have been baptized, having been taught. Uh, there's so much maturing and growing. You can befriend them. And everybody that's involved in that is playing a part in evangelism. Um, so, so, so often I think we, we get ourselves afraid that we're not going to be um, that we're not evangelistic if we're not sitting down and open up and opening up our Bible and being a part of that. But God uses so many different people and he can use you no matter what you think your abilities are or aren't. And he can grow those abilities if you find ways to do what you can do well to be a part of that process. That's it. And I, I, I got a question for everybody who's listening. Nobody on who's listening to the show, watching this show is a, an island. Like you're going to meet people, whether you're, 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 old, you're, you're in your, you're in a, you're like a hospital bed uh, or you're, you're in, you know, can't move around or you move around. People come to you or you go to people. You're always around people, whether it's just one person or many, that's the person that you should reach, you know, right there. That's so it. that's awesome. Yeah. And prayer, prayer is awesome. Like prayer. Hey, if you're sitting there and you're not sure what to do, just pray. God will work it. <laughs> yeah. Well, God bless you, man, and I really appreciate you being on the show. You've been listening to Be Brave. The world right now is a crazy place, and sharing the love of God is the most important thing we can do right now. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit up GoBeBrave.org. Remember, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Learn how to love like Jesus. See you next time.